Throughout church history, holy widows have become friends with priests and bishops, supporting them spiritually and materially, including Olympias and John Chrysostom. Her parents, Seleucus and Alexandra, died when she was still a child, and she was put under the care of her uncle Procopius. Procopius was a pious Christian, as was her nanny Theodosia. Theodosia, who was like Olympias's second mother, raised her to be a holy Christian woman, instructing Olympias in the Christian faith and encouraged her to pursue virtue. Olympias grew up to become an intelligent and good woman. She was also attractive and had inherited a fortune, so her uncle had little trouble arranging a lucrative marriage for Olympias with a wealthy man. She was married to Nebridius. Just over a year after the wedding, her husband Nebridius died leaving Olympias even richer than before, as she inherited Nebridius's vast and profitable estates. Given that she was now the lady of a great deal of valuable land, Olympias became a highly desirable widow, who caught the attention of Emperor Theodosius. Emperor Theodosius put great pressure upon Olympias to marry again, the emperor suggested his cousin Elpidius. Olympias flatly refused. She resolved to become a consecrated widow in the church and give her entire life and livelihood to her fellow Christians. Had God wanted me to remain a wife, Olympias purportedly said, he would not have taken my husband away. In response to her stubbornness, Emperor Theodosius seized Olympias's wealth and put it under the direction of an official until she was 30, unless she agreed to marry his cousin. Undaunted, Olympias wrote to the emperor thanking him, saying that she was glad to be free of the worry about her fortune. Theodosius was impressed by her spunk and her fortitude, her parisia, and he restored her estates to her, which Olympias then promptly donated to the church. In 398, Olympias founded a monastery in one of her palaces in Constantinople. she became a sort of abbess of the community that gathered there. The community grew until around 250 women were living there as monastic sisters. When she was 30, she was ordained a deaconess by the Archbishop of Constantinople. In 398, St. John Chrysostom was elected Bishop of Constantinople and the fiery preacher and Olympias quickly became close friends. They were both devoted to an ascetic lifestyle and to caring for the poor. Christian Family TV is made possible by your generosity. Because of your donation today, we were able to create more than 200 plus wonderful stories on saints, stories of faith, and many other interesting videos to teach our kids. Yes, you are making a difference. We could not do what we do without you. We want to remind you again to take a Patreon subscription. It only costs $2 to start with, or make a one-time donation starting at $5. This will help us continue making these videos. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he smile on you and be gracious to you. Thank you, and God bless you. One of Chrysostom's biographers wrote, 
there was no one in Constantinople with whom he was to have a deeper or more sympathetic understanding no one with whom he was to feel more at ease or to whom he was to pour out his heart more unreservedly. Although he shunned dinner parties, John Chrysostom would eat the simple meals that Olympias brought him. In 404, John Chrysostom was exiled after he got on the wrong side of Empress Eudoxia. Olympias was persecuted because of her close association with him and her loyalty to him as the true Archbishop of the city. Her opponents slandered her and John, and her community fell apart. Due to these trials, Olympias went into a sort of self-imposed exile and later left the city she had lived in for so long and given so much to and lived her final years in Nicomedia. She continued to keep up her spiritual mission of care for the poor. During John's last days, he wrote many letters to Olympias from his arduous journeys during his exile. These letters are poignant testimonies to the depth of suffering he and his friends were experiencing and the spiritual friendship these two saints shared. In return, Olympias' letters were written while she was being persecuted back in Constantinople. They are filled with her feelings of despondency and depression. John continues to encourage her to lift up her heart and to try to brighten her spirit. John encourages her to be a great athlete of patience like Job. His letter is a beautiful encouragement from one who is finishing his own race to a fellow runner, admonishing her to stay strong in the final laps ahead of her. In her last days, Olympia was banished with the entire community of nuns which she governed in Constantinople. Her illnesses added to her sufferings, but she never ceased her good works until her death in the year 410. St. Olympias died from illness in 408. God. You inspired St. Olympias to strive for perfect charity and so attain your kingdom at the end of her pilgrimage on earth. Strengthen us through her intercession that we may advance rejoicing in the way of love. Amen. We want to remind you again to take a Patreon subscription. It only costs $2 to start with or make a one-time donation starting at $5. This will help us continue making these videos.